1983, Hasbro released the second series of action figures in their G.I. Joe toy line. The 1982 reboot had been a massive success, reimagining G.I. Joe from 12-inch action figures to a 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, which made vehicles and accessories easier to produce at the smaller size. Some of the most iconic figures in the entire line were introduced at this time, like the G.I. Joe Marine, Gung Ho, and the mercenary enemy weapon supplier, Destro. And today, we'll be taking a look at Destro, here on Creed's Collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. Today we're looking at Destro from the 1983 toy line G.I. Joe by Hasbro. Destro is the faceless power behind Mars, the military armaments research system, which is the largest manufacturer of state-of-the-art weaponry in the world of G.I. Joe. Destro believes war is necessary because in his eyes only through survival of the fittest can the greatest advances be made. He lives a luxurious lifestyle thanks to his arms dealing and is willing to provide weapons to the highest bidder, good or evil. Destro is known to incite war to increase profits, even going as far as entering battle himself, wearing his family's traditional silver battle mask. He is known to assist Cobra Command, but would stand against them if it was better for business. And now that we know a little bit more about Destro, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Destro has one of the most outlandish and memorable costumes of all the G.I. Joe figures from the original few waves. That silver mask and deep V-cut shirt are hard to forget. And I'm really happy with how well the back metal chrome is held up on the helmet. I'm actually surprised it looks as good as it does after all these years. Now on the front here, he's got his Dracula medallion. And I just realized doing this review that his collar looks a lot like the Cobra symbol. Never noticed that before. On the front of the card, you can see that Destro has grenades on one forearm and rockets on the other. And they are represented on the toy. The three grenades are right here, but for some reason there's only two rockets. Hey, but that's okay, at least it's there. It's a pretty cool detail. And I guess you could just say he fired one in battle. As we come around to the back of Destro, you can see the peg hole in his back where his backpack goes. But other than that, there's not a lot of detail going on. So we'll go ahead and move on to his accessories. This is his backpack slash attache case. It opens, there's a clasp right there, and that peg allows you to put it on his back. The outside of it is pretty nondescript, almost kind of boring, and I really wish they would have put a handle on either like this side or that side so he could carry it like a briefcase or a backpack. Because essentially it is like a case. You open it up here on the side with the clasp, you have to push these two pieces apart to open it, and I rarely do this because I'm afraid it'll break the hinge. But once you get it open, man, there's some cool stuff in here. So it appears to be a handgun and magazine, two different types of knives, Four grenades, and I guess two smoke bombs or tear gas canisters. That is pretty cool. On the right side, we have what looks to be an M16 all broken down into its pieces. The only way this pack could be cooler is if all these weapons could be taken out of it and actually used. And I gotta say, I'm glad to have the inside of this pack on video because I doubt I'll ever open it again because I'm really afraid that hinge will break one day. Like all G.I. Joe backpacks, Destro's attache case can be pegged into his back. And there you go, it's that easy. Unfortunately, I do not have Destro's gun, but here's a picture of it so you know what it looks like and a size comparison with his attache case. And as usual, now I have a fire under me to find this gun so I can complete my Destro. Now I'll take a quick look at G.I. Joe figure's articulation. Uh, the knee has a 90 degree bend to it and the hip is a ball joint, which allows for some pretty good flexibility. Rubber band waist allows them to lean back and forth as well as give some swivel. The shoulder joints can spin around and go up and down, and in Series 2, they introduce swivel arm battle grip. Now the head can look left and right only because the ball joint neck didn't come till Series 4. And that's it. That covers all of Destro's articulation. On Destro's backside, you can see that he was made in Hong Kong. And on the inside of his left leg, even though it's kind of hard to make out, it's 1983 Hasbro. Here's a quick look at Destro's file card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. And now for our He-Man size comparison. He-Man's obviously much bigger than Destro, so he's not worried about fighting him. And after dealing with Skeletor and Hordak, that silver mask certainly isn't going to intimidate him. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy review for Destro 
from the 1983 toy line G.I. Joe by Hasbro. Cobra Commander and Destro are the villains of the G.I. Joe series. Destro even broke away from Cobra later and formed his own faction to fight Cobra and G.I. Joe. But that's a story for another day. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I review a toy for my vintage collection every Wednesday. So hope to see you next week and every week after, here on Creed's Collection.